Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Yeah. In Thank one you. minute, I'd like you to cry, Father. Let something from heaven come upon my destiny Lord, that will shift me Father, to a new dimension. Lift your voice and pray passionately. Come upon me this morning. Please Lord, pray. Let there be unusual visitation upon my life this morning. Lord, let there be a divine connection to heaven. In the name of Jesus, set my heart a place for you. Those outside pray. Following by way of the TV station, the internet, pray. Give me an encounter. The Bible says, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please be seated for a while. I'll just give a charge and then we'll have an opportunity to just let God minister to our needs even as we wrap up this conference. Yesterday we began to discuss on the matters of the kingdom contrasting the gospel of salvation with the gospel of the kingdom. I did say yesterday that the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the Father revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus the Son the object of that love being man primarily then by extension the entire creation that the goal of the gospel of salvation is to bring reconciliation to bring a legal platform for man to receive the life of God what we know to be eternal life but then that when we discuss the gospel of the kingdom Jesus is no longer savior he is king enthroned and exalted Man is no longer alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. Man is now a citizen of the kingdom, the beloved of God. Now he's ready for kingdom responsibility. Hallelujah. And I made a statement yesterday that I want to make reference to again. I said the empowerment of the believer, it is at the instance of his going forth, to represent the purposes of the kingdom it is your ability to go representing the purposes of the kingdom that necessitates and legitimizes your being empowered the word anoint does not just mean to smear with oil the word anoint means to legitimize an operation so when the bible says how god anointed jesus to anoint means to ordain to ordain means to legitimize an operation so that it is no longer illegal so when God anoints us to heal the sick we can decide to heal the sick without being anointed and the realm of the spirit will interpret it as an illegitimate operation but the anointing authorizes your operation are we together we have a beautiful protocol team here. We have security teams and they have different systems of legitimization. Not anybody will get up and just do anything. There are people ordained, legitimized. 
Are we together now? Yes. And the Lord placed in my heart to just share a few things as we just prepare to receive from the Lord. This kingdom that we so talk about, this kingdom that we so celebrate, is not only a kingdom of light, it's not only a kingdom of responsibility, it is a kingdom of power. The kingdom that we belong to is a kingdom of power. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. The Bible says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, empty speech, but the kingdom of God is in power. That means the realities of the kingdom can be proven here and now. If you say God is love, it should not stop as a theory. It can be demonstrated. If you say God lifts, it can be demonstrated. There is an ability of the spirit that is back of every claim that God makes. That this is not a kingdom of empty words. We live in a society where we have human beings who speak but they do not have the requisite level of power to make what they say come to pass. But here he says this kingdom is not just in empty words, but is in power. Someone say power. This is very important. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Apostle Paul again will read the first five verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'll read from verse 1 and then we'll end verse 5. It says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with the excellency of speech or wisdom, Sophia, human wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. We're reading to verse 5. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse 3. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not in enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. Keep this scripture here. Please keep verse 4. That means you are given only two options when you communicate the kingdom. You will either use enticing words as a replacement when there is the absence of the ability to demonstrate the spirit and power. When the spirit and the power of God is absent, the only other thing that can attempt to replace it is the enticing words of man's wisdom. Hopes that are stared but will not be met. Vocal claims that are so boldly made but do not have the requisite level of grace to defend. It says enticing words of man's wisdom but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power to this end verse 5 it says that your faith should not rest upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of God this God that we call Lord that we call Christ is also king and this king is powerful Powerful to heal. Powerful to deliver. In as much as the, the basis, understand this, the basis of our relationship and the basis of our pursuit for God is not things. It's not miracles. It's not signs and wonders. We love him more than these things. However, in the economy of God, he has so designed a benevolent system that whilst we seek him for who he is, he does not leave us in shame and in pain and in disarray. It takes a responsible king. Listen, there is no kingdom that has an honest and a sincere king without a provision for the well-being of the citizens. Every kingdom has a security system. Every kingdom has an economic system. Is that true? Every system has a, a, a kingdom, has a judiciary system. These are the things that make up a responsible kingdom. And this God that we serve, I announce to you once again, is a God that is powerful. 
is a king. He's not seated on an empty throne. That throne you see is very ancient. The Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. He sits there and manipulates all things according to the counsel of his will. So we're gathered here this morning. We have heard several preachers have come. Men of God after men of God have come to propose different dimensions of this kingdom. And all of them are through based on the authority of scripture. But this conference would not be complete if all we do is just share the grace and go back asking questions. So what about what they said would happen to me? What about the lifting? He comes to make good that which he has said. The one who says and does must be God indeed. Are we blessed? When he says I will lift you, let me tell you this. You see, before God speaks, he vets himself whether he has the ability to defend what he has said. If at all you hear him speak, he has the ability to make what he has said come to pass. This is the God that we serve. The Bible says God is not a man. It's a very important information. God is not a man. He became a man, but he is not a man. If he's a man, he must worship who created him. God is not a man. He only became a man to the end that he may bring many sons into glory. But God is not a man that he should lie. Lying is a weakness in men. Men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because there is inconsistency between their desires and their abilities. So he's saying that quality is not found in God. No, he does not lie. Neither the son of man that she should repent. If he speaks, he's able to make it come to pass. We stand to so boast about a kingdom whose reality can be demonstrated here and now. When he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. There must be an evidence of that love. Is that not true? John chapter 3 and verse 16, 50, uh, John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Forget about what he gave. Every time love is true, it gives. In this case, he gave his son, but his son is not the only thing he gave. He that did not spare his only son but he offered him freely for us how much more with him there are things that came with the son it was not only the son he gave ah. John 10:10. 10, 10, he said the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy and he says I am come that ye may have life you can choose to stop at that realm but then to have that life more abundantly life is the impartation of God's life in you that secures you for eternity. Abundant life is eternal life alongside the possibilities that come with that life. The capacity to live a quality life while serving the purposes of God. You live in health, you live in joy, you live in peace. You see the word of God becoming flesh right before you. That is abundant life. Are we together? So we're gathered here now whilst we're smiling. In truth, there are many situations in our lives that seem to negate the speakings of God. These, these situations are an attempt by the devil to discredit the love, to discredit the responsibility of this king who also happens to be father. Because the Bible says any man that fails to cater for his family, number one, he has denied the faith. Then he is worse than an infidel. So sicknesses, oppressions, they are letters written by the devil using man as a canvas. An attempt to spite the supremacy and the power of God. So when God stretches his hands in miracle signs and wonders, it's more than just showing that a man is anointed. It's a reply back to creation using man again. That I am still God and I am seated on the throne. This is the God that we serve. I will never teach a God that I cannot defend. No. When God was sending me in ministry, 
I prayed and I cried. I said, Lord, do not send me with just a sermon. The people we are talking to are not foolish people. Do not send me. We live in a time where there are all kinds of options that attempt and even propose to be God. And be careful when you insult those options. Be sure your alternative is viable enough. Because when the desperation of man reaches its zenith, he will outsource for anything. So Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that are weary, are heavy laden. He leaves you with a promise. I will give you rest. Rest is a gift that can be given and it can be proven that you have found rest. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. The Bible says, and the Lord had blessed him in all things. Favor, all things. Health, all things. Your children, all things. Are we together now? Yes. In 2 Kings, when you read chapter 5, the Bible talks about a very interesting man. The Bible says there was a man who was the captain of the Syrian army. He says he was a valiant man in war. And through his courage and dexterity, he was able to bring victory to the people. But he was leprous. There were still aspects of his life that were yet to succumb to that level of victory. And eventually, through the ministry of a slave girl and a prophet, he came into perfect wholeness. His skin, the Bible says, becoming like that of a child. In chapter 4 of the same Kings, we read how that there was a woman. She was a wife of one of the sons of the prophet who had died. The creditors came and they were going to take the children away. And she went to a prophet and cried. And he said, what do you have in your house? Nothing except a jar of oil, she said. He said, you go and borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. Close your door when you have them. Pour that oil. And the Bible says the oil kept pouring. He said, sell it off, pay your debt and leave off the rest. God is a miracle worker. This is true. We make miracle walk promise. Listen, is the light in the darkness, is my God, God? That is who you are. It's not a special number, it's a statement of truth. We make miracle walk promise. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. He did it in such a way that even though we were expecting for him to come, he did it in a grand style. You know, um, there's a lot of construction that happens around your area here. And you can easily know the company handling the project because number one, the quality. But number two, there is a signature that follows everything they are doing. Help those under the anointing there, please. Are we together? You know a Julius Berger block, for instance. If you're in construction, I apologize. I'm not promoting any company, just for instance. If you lift their block and it lands, it will not break. You know this was built by them. There is a way God works that when you see it, you can't mistake it for an idol. There is his signature on that miracle. And this is the kind of thing he wants to do in your life. Listen. If all you receive is a miracle, he's not glorified. He has to do it in a way that every other person will know. Janus and Jambas can also turn a rod into a serpent. But can their rod swallow another serpent and yet not increase? God is a miracle worker. And this kingdom is a kingdom of power. It is on the strength of that awareness we can travel from region to region telling people that Jesus is Lord. Lord means owner. Lord means controller. Lord is a very implicating statement. I understand Savior. But Lord? You never say he's Lord without a demonstration. When you say he's Savior, the cross is there to prove it. 
when you say he's Lord, show me the evidence. The cross proves he's Savior. What proves that he's Lord? I will tell you the proof that he's Lord. Whoever owns the earth and its fullness, the walls and they that dwell therein, he must be the Lord. And the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. But, 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 anyone can claim to be Lord. There is a litmus test to whoever will be that Lord. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? Who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, the Bible says, nor sworn deceitfully that he shall receive a blessing from the Lord. And then, here is the ultimate test. Whoever is Lord in this earth must be able to go out of this earth and come back at will. That was the one test. No other deity passed. Because you see, according to the law of territory, once you come out of this domain, someone inside must be the one to call you back. You can't bring yourself inside. So all other gods exited this earth, but those gates did not open for them to come back. And here is this one who came out by himself. And when he was about to return, the gate said, there was a proclamation, lift up your heads. O ye gates, and be lifted, O ye ancient doors. Listen carefully. Why? It says that the king of glory may come in. Hold on. Sit down. We're about to pray. And the gates ask a question. Many have come trying to enter back. But who is this king of glory? And it says the Lord. Strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle and the gates open and he stepped into this realm and said all hail, all power, authority, exousia has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go, go with that backing, go with that consciousness that your defender is the Lord. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Listen to me. This world we live in is an arrogant world that must see a display of the reality of the power, the glory, the grace of God, the all-surpassing supremacy of this ancient king that sits. For a long time he may be silent, but his silence is not weakness. Why do the heathens rage? The Bible says... And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings set themselves. There are two people who will shout under the anointing now. Please bring them out. Please make sure that uh, they are defended. I just saw this in the spirit. We are praying now. I just saw a strong anointing. Just two people. One loud shout to the hearing of everybody. Please bring them out. Shabala Subranike. Please bring them. So there is a king. Listen carefully. And there is a kingdom. This kingdom that we so preach about. This kingdom that we so boast about. Is not a church theory. No. This God that we talk about. Is not a man of God's sermon. No. No. It says, when I came to you. Hold on. Who is Biodun? I'm hearing a name, Biodun. Who is Biodun? Biodun. Is there someone with such a name? I'm hearing Biodun. You are wearing a suit with a shirt like ash, no tie. This is what I'm seeing. Is there a gentleman like that? A black suit with no tie. Is there someone like that? What's your name? 
please is the mic working help us not everybody fakes power there are people who know Jesus Christ genuinely what's your name sir where are you coming from come from uh, you're a member of this church yes sir. okay I want to pray for you you believe in Jesus Grace. I can imagine that there are many people with the name Grace. But I'm hearing the name Grace. Would, would not destabilize. Please make sure there's no random. Let's maintain order so that we don't disrupt the service. And those following online, please now is the time to connect from whatever nation following by way of the TV station. There's no limits to what the Holy Spirit can do. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Bible says, the woman wearing blue, my dear, lift your hands. I'm seeing oil coming on your head right now. Bring her out. You are the covenant keeping God. my friend what do you do sir I'm an electrician electrician I want to pray for you you believe that God lifts three months from now go and write it your life will change in a way that you will never forget this conference I speak to you by the Spirit of God I stretch my hands towards you listen to me my friend look at me Remember once upon a time in the land of Samaria, a prophet came and said, by this time tomorrow, and a foolish man said, even if God will open the heavens, uh -uh. and he said, you will see it just to witness that God does not lie, but you will not partake of it. Remember the Bible says, there remained a rest for the people of God. It says, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. They limited God. By saying, can God make a way? Can God make a way? This lady, my dear, in the name of Jesus, the yoke of witchcraft, I curse it now from your life and from your family. For it is written, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us, the Bible declares that he nailed it to his cross. He nailed it to his cross. The victory of Jesus is complete. The victory of Jesus is a fact. But it remains theory until there is faith and understanding that translates that reality here and now. My friend, you go back rejoicing in the name of Jesus the Christ of God. Hallelujah. One, two, three, four, five years. You've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Five years. Who is that? Please don't be embarrassed. I will pray generally now. Make sure it is five years exactly. One, two, three, four, five. The Lord is showing me this. Who is that? Don't be embarrassed, my dear. No, this is this is more than five years. I'm saying no. It's not just five years. How many years? Are you married? Please make sure you are married. Okay, hold on. I want to pray for you. Mama, you, are you standing for yourself? I'm seeing your daughter. What's her name? I want to pray for you. Hold on, madam. Don't worry. I will pray for you. Is your daughter here? England. Huh? She's Hold in on. England. She's in England. She's a medical doctor. Medical doctor. Twelve 
13, 14, 15, 16 years. How many years? 16 years. 16 years buried. I want to pray for you. Madam, please give this woman the mic. Are you the one trusting God for the fruit of the 18 womb? years, yes, sir. One, three. 18. Or 18. One, eight. You, yes, 18. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. You see, let me tell you this. Before you believe a man, don't just find out about God. Find out about the man too. You know, the Bible says it is sin to minister above your level of grace. It says to minister according to the level of grace. I want to pray for you. Jesus is Lord. And here at Calvary Bible Church, you will never forget that God himself brought this opportunity for your lifting, for your rising. This is the Jesus that we present to the nations. The one who can heal, the one who can bless. My dear, don't be embarrassed what I want. What's your name? Florence. Florence. Yes, sir. Don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for you. Yes, I'm seeing a lot of miscarriages. Nine miscarriages, sir. How many? Nine. Nine. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over these people standing. Help her. The power of God is coming on her. Ah. There is nothing you cannot do. Jesus Christ please just make contact with your stomach as a prophetic point of contact in the name of Jesus who is the Christ of God I join my faith with the angel over this house and in Jesus name I prophesy to you who are standing here according to the time of life in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God return with miracle children Look what is happening to this woman. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. I release every chain that holds anyone here. In the name of Jesus. Whether you're standing in for yourself, you're standing in for your children. In Jesus name, the Christ of God. Return with testimonies. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. God bless you so that we can hurry up. My friend, look at me. What's your name? Who is, who is Christian? What's your name? Huh? Christian Godwin. Aha, uh -huh, I'm hearing Christian. I want to pray for you. What do you do? You are, you are a man of God in this, in this assembly? I hope you're not embarrassed. Huh? That's not the issue. Just, just, just calm down and listen to what I'll tell you. Huh? I want to pray for you. It's true you are serving the Lord, but there are attacks in your life. Oh. You need to be prayed for. Huh? God brought you to this conference. Leave the issue of man of God. Let God deal with your situation. Now you can go and preach. You understand? He will use you greatly, truly. But there's a lot of learning for you. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Everything that does not name the name of Christ in and around your life. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare let it be gone right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know how we'll do this now. But I'm seeing the Lord is asking me to rebuke delay. Now listen please. You know that the spirit of delay is at work in your life when the only thing that goes forward is your age. 
the only thing help them please help that man the only thing that moves forward is your age he says the spirit of god is upon me i want to pray for you now please listen let's just work with these instructions as much as possible we can use these aisles don't come near where the ministers are seated let's just honor the man of god but i want to pray for you the power of god will come on a few of you please whether you are an usher or not do well to help them so they don't injure themselves right now i stretch my hands here at calvary bible church no 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 please go back go back please go back i'm not saying you should come out the power of god will bring them out by themselves you just go back in the name of jesus christ everyone under the sound of my voice please return back who is a victim of delay right now as i pray the power of god will come on you bring them out in the name of jesus at the count of three one two three take that grace bring them out bring them out help them please bring them out hold that lady let her not enjoy herself i cause delay you are a spirit here at this global kingdom conference we stand in the name of jesus sitting on the destinies of men every spirit help this woman help this woman behind the man of god please shake it back at delay go delay go and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of ahab down to jisrael i cause delay in the name of jesus i cause delay from your life from your habitation i cause delay here at this global conference the king is here the kingdom is here there is power in the name of jesus there is in one minute and cause every delay i release myself now in the name of jesus are you praying you came to church to pray this is a conference for your lifting lift your voice and pray under this corporate anointing every delay help them that will not let me go in the name of jesus i decree and declare liberty by the spirit Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen. My goodness. Anyone here experiencing delay? That people are moving forward, but your destiny is staying in one place. Birthday after birthday, I stand in the name of Jesus in partnership with the grace upon your man of God. By prophecy, I push you to the next level. I push you to the next level. I shake a katoska, a break the toske de bakata, a break the toska likata, a shake a skamakatoskiata. I push you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now listen to me, please. I understand there are many people in this assembly who are entrepreneurs, business people. I want to pray for you. You see, there is a grace for visibility. It is one thing to have products and services that are needed and useful. It is one thing to package those products 
in a superior way is one thing to have the ability to serve it to a targeted consumer base but you need the grace that makes for visibility in Acts chapter 12 the Bible says Peter was bound hand and feet and there were about eight soldiers locking him in the prison listen carefully Acts chapter 12 then the Bible says when the angel came the chains fell off and it reveals there a mystery he says that he went through the first gate he was out of the prison but he was still not safe he went to the second gate then the Bible makes an instructive statement that he came to the iron gate that opens up to the city there is a gate that opens up to the city listen carefully when that gate is open all you see is the city is the gate that controls visibility it is the iron gate you can have products and services you are not in prison but the city does not know you are there the Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder are you ready to receive in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God the grace that makes for visibility you don't have to bring them under the anointing because of space but I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus I'm seeing the number 31 3 1 in the name of Jesus everyone here who has what it takes for the world to celebrate you everyone here dreams and visions Abadakata, help them products and services you have labored you've been well mentored by your man of God he has taught you the ethics of business but something is covering your visibility by this grace in the name of Jesus take that anointing I command the city to hear you Lagos hear them Lagos hear them Lagos hear them Southwest hear them Nigeria hear them please pay attention we are still praying can I pray for restoration there is a grace that restores son of man he said can these bones live again hear me every time there were losses in the bible of any kind it was the office of the prophetic to bring restoration any kind whether it was the axe head or the wives of the sons of the prophet alas master for it was borrowed it is the office of the prophetic to speak restoration he said they are taken for a prey and none say it restore you can lose things but when you lose time you really lost but in the economy of God he can restore things and he can restore time. Listen to me. There are people by the normal sequence of life. You should not be at this level. Things happen in your life. Restoration is not progress. Restoration is beyond progress. If you have been impeded by life. Once that constraint leaves you. And you move forward. That's not restoration. That's progress. Restoration is God picking you. And placing you where you would have been if that challenge were not there do you believe this please believe please believe please believe I want to declare restoration you will marvel and wonder at what happens to you at this prayer in the name of Jesus I call upon the God of my covenant for everyone here who is trusting God for any kind of restoration every destiny helper that must be used in this season to bring about a restoration I provoke their ministry over your life I provoke I provoke their ministry over your life hallelujah praise the name of the Lord 
We have a few minutes. Let me pray for the sick. God is a God that heals. I have been a victim of sickness myself. I know what sickness can do. I have seen the healing power of God myself. I know healing is real. There are men and women here following by TV, internet and here in our local environment you are trusting God for miracles healing miracles listen to me Jesus heals his power heals lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle I want to pray for you right now if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest Spirit of the Sovereign Lord Come and make your presence known Reveal the glory of the Lord You're the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord Come and make your presence known Reveal the glory of the Lord Let the weight of your glory, of your glory that is over us. us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom that is reign in us. Let the weight of your glory. Please hear me. I know that we have a few minutes, but now listen, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pray for you, some of you already, by coming out here and all the things that happen, miracles have happened to you already. But here's what will happen. Please listen carefully. We'll still steal out a few minutes. We're going to pray. And as I rebuke that devil, I want you to expect real provable miracles. And the moment that happens, even if it's in five minutes, I'm going to ask you, the moment you find out the power of God has touched you and you confirm that there is a miracle, if we can have just one or two pastors, just one or two of them, I want those people to just rush and come and stand, even if it's just two or three we take to validate the power and the grace of Jesus at work and then also at work in this assembly and in this commission. Is that fine? Are we together? Please lay your hands. I want to pray. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now. Now, I don't know why God does this. It is a sign and a wonder. But there's going to be a loud shout. After that shout, the healing power of God will begin to flow and I will pray. I, I need to explain this because sometimes you see, the way God works with us is really very mysterious why he does it sometimes. A loud shout, the power of God just comes upon a lady. A loud shout. Sometimes I really don't know why that happens. But I believe that is a, a sign and a wonder. The Bible says the shout of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous. Praise the name of the Lord. The moment that shout happens, then I'll begin to minister to the sick. But you lay your hands right now. I want to pray for you. This is a supernatural power of God. My God, there's such a strong anointing. Such a strong anointing in this place. You're already receiving, but this is instruction God gives me. The power of God will come upon someone, a lady. So now we begin to pray. Please agree with me. In the name of Jesus. 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 
on every devil that is back of any infirmity in the name of Jesus I command that your power is broken now let God's people go free now in the name of Jesus Christ now I declare be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name my God just help those under the anointing be healed in Jesus name from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed in Jesus name the power of God is going through your body now help them please help them be healed in Jesus name blind eyes be open now partial complete blindness be open now there are some people having pain pain at the back side your lumbar vertebra be healed the power of God is touching you right now every kind of bone condition you're here you're on crutches you're on a wheelchair you don't have to bring them out you don't have to bring those under the anointing out there's no space because some other people will come you're on a wheelchair you're on crutches right now I declare in the name of Jesus stand up stand up and lift your crutch and walk in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus every blood condition every genotype issue we change it now HIV be healed now cancer be healed now the Lord is ministering to me you don't have to come out there are a number of ladies with multiple lumps around your breast area the power of God is touching you right now after this prayer you check it you will not find it again in the name of Jesus I'm seeing a I don't know if it's a, there's a there's a gentleman you have what looks like a swelling at the back of your neck after this prayer you check it right now you'll find out that it's gone completely in the name of Jesus every blood condition goes right now migraine headache very severe pounding migraine headache the Lord is healing you right now I'm seeing someone you have this recurrent pattern it's like every month you have to treat typhoid or malaria every month no matter how well you treat it it still comes back the power of God is touching you right now I'm seeing three people the Lord is healing them from pile in fact for one of you it's a very severe issue you cannot even go to the toilet because of how inconveniencing it is and because of the excruciating pain we come in the name of the Lord Jesus let there be healing for you I see some of you lifting photos of your loved ones lifting the pictures of your loved ones wherever they are and those of you following by way of TV following online in the name of Jesus here at Calvary Bible Church we decree and declare the healing power of Jesus leaves this altar right to your homes to your offices in the name of Jesus your homes your offices your devices let there be miracles in the name of Jesus the Christ of God in the name of Jesus Christ there's someone your your this is my right your right ear your right ear you feel you know how this is like there's water you are trying to get it to come out as soon as we are done praying check yourself you find out that a miracle has happened to you in the name of Jesus there is a woman you're, you're not exactly a young lady I'm saying that um, I don't know it's not appendicitis but there is a severe looks like there's a mast just around your lower abdominal area in the name of Jesus Christ, as I pray for you, I command that mass to disappear now. The Lord is showing me a family, your mother, mama is in the hospital right now as I am speaking. The power of God is touching her where she is. This, is. this is a teaching hospital. In the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle. Now, for time's sake, whether I mentioned your case specifically or not, in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God, he's been exalted both as Lord and as Christ. I declare, be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now.
Now, we have just five minutes to do that. I want you to check yourself inside and outside. Many of you are already seeing miracles. Check yourself very quickly. The moment you find out that a miracle has happened, please ushers, allow them. File up here quickly. Quickly, check yourself. People are coming. Are you celebrating people? Check yourself. Make your way out. Make sure you confirm the miracle and then be on your way. Then we'll do the final impartation. Celebrate them as they come, please. You can use... Where do we use? Okay, people are coming. Celebrate them. Oh, 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 oh. He's able. Are you celebrating miracles? these testimonies you can keep coming at, at least we will find a way of documenting them yes are you ready sir go ahead so, sorry, my name is Annie and I've had this breast long you've had this breast long yes for how long it's over six months now but by prayers in this altar it was discovered I wasn't cancerous but the lump has been there so it's been an issue of concern okay so each time I'm always touching it it's always I'm always worried yes. even if they say it's no longer cancer by prayers I had from this. What place. happened now? But by, when the prayer was going on, I just checked and the lump had... My God. Gone. It will never return to you again. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Yes, please. Very quickly. My name is Innocent Peter. Okay. I was having a pain in my waist and it's over two months now. Okay. But after the prayer, the pain Completely gone. Left. Bend. Bend down. Bend down. Any pain. Any pain. Are you celebrating miracles here? In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare it's gone and gone forever. Yes, please. My name is Damilola. I Yesterday night, I noticed that I, I wasn't feeling movement. In, I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant. Oh, yeah, I can see now. So, just as you asked us to, even till this morning. And you were not feeling movement? I was not feeling movement. Of the baby? Yes, sir. And My just God. as you asked us to place her hand on any part, I, I started feeling movement, strong movement. Creator of the universe What can you do? What can you do? Jesus You are the name Name above every other name What can you take? What can you take? Jesus Place your hand there and right now the baby moved let her finish the testimony go ahead yes the baby moved. completely place your hand there how many months are you i'm eight months old. eight months yes, sir. in the name of jesus deliver like the hebrew women i stretch my hands no complication mother and baby are fine we release you right from this altar towards your safe delivery in the name of jesus are you ready sir go ahead my name is Kolade. Stomach also for long now, but the moment I placed my hand there, I discovered that it's yeah, it's gone completely. Yes, yes. How long has it been? It's up to 12 years now before my mother died. Lay your hands there in the name of Jesus Christ. It never returns to you, never returns to you again in Jesus' name. Yes, please. My name is Abigail. I normally have migraine headache and one side of my eyes always swell up every two, three years. One so, side, come again. My name is Abigail. I uh -huh. normally have migraine headache. One side of my eyes. I don't know pressure. Which of them? Eyes. Which of, okay, I see. Uh-huh. So, when you were praying, the pain come over, but now I'm no more hearing the pain again. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, it goes never to return again in Jesus name yes please 
My name is Odan Rabaiku. I've been having an um, issue of pile. Even pile? Pile, yeah. So, for a long time. How long can you remember? Okay. For a long time. Okay. So, you mentioned my case, and I, be, I believe, I felt a relief, and I believe. In the I'll name of healed. Jesus, you go for a very formal checkup, and you will find out that a miracle has happened to you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. My name is Emmanuel. Recently, I was diagnosed some one month ago with secondary hypertension. I've been having serious secondary chest pain. Secondary hypertension? Yes, ah. yes. I've been having very serious chest pain. I came to church. I was having, it was very severe, really very severe. But um, as I started praying, I kept my hand on my chest. Now, I do not feel any pain. Completely. Even palpitations, I do not feel any one. The now. palpitations are gone. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, you go forth in joy, you are led forth in peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. My name is Wisdom Isaac. I was having severe head pain since two weeks. But Headache. And right now, yes, now it's, it's gone, gone completely. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. My name is Chia Rokichuko. For three months now, I've been having, I fainted and I went to the hospital. They said I should not be fasting again. Even I'm going to church, I'll test something. But today, I decided not to test anything because I believe I'll be healed. Because the pain is severe. I can't breathe. I'll be feeling fainting. So as I was there, I was feeling the fainting. But when prayer was going on, the pain disappeared. That, that evil spirit manifesting as infirmity, I declare here at this conference, you are released from it now. Amen. Never to be a victim of it again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, please. Hallelujah. My name is Christian Godwin. On Sunday, last week Sunday after service, I received this attack on my health that I, I could not even barely walk enough after ministration. So I had to in the evening. Oh, you're the rushed. man that passed. Yes, sir. Okay. So I had to be rushed. My member had to rush me. I have to I have to just go to the hospital because it was so strange after ministration after service the grace. I went to have cancer and those were like And what happened now? So then I went to the hospital and since then I came to Lagos and now I've been praying for God to fully restore back my strength. And as she were praying, the Lord restored my strength. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says he restored my soul. Let your restoration be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Yes, sir. My name is Bright Obey. Yes, sir. I'm a minister of the gospel. Wow. This pile has been disturbing the occurrence. I can't count the years. For the past three days, I've not been able to ease myself well. And when I go to the third, I don't even want my wife to see because of the kind of blood that you come out. But as oh my God. when I was sitting down here, I find it difficult because of the pain. But right now, completely. Now. You see, listen, when miracles happen like this, among the many things, you must learn to discern miracles. Miracles don't just show that a man is powerful. There is a dimension to that, but miracles are a revelation of the love of Jesus. Miracles are also a revelation of the might and the power of Jesus. Are we together now? But then, to really benefit from miracles, you have to discern the message. Every miracle has a letter written in it. Don't throw away the envelope because you are rejoicing over what is there there is still something in it miracles are a letter from jesus saying i am still lord saying i still love you and it plants faith in you and some of the things that happen in the bodies of men are if god can open up a blocked intestine or a blocked tube it means he can open up a door a business door you must discern and know how to prophetically discern and apply miracles to your life if a blind eye opens it means if god can open a human eye god can open a door yes, sir. are we together now sir we thank you and we honor you for coming out to share this testimony is it all right if i say a word of prayer for you i stand by the election of grace and i declare may your ministry shift to a new level from today Amen. i come by the privilege of the election of grace i pray that every dimension you desire even in this season may you begin to step in it and this pile that is caused here on this ground it is caused now and caused forever 
in the name of Jesus. We have a few minutes. We have to walk with time. Yes, Praise please. The Lord. A lump in my left breast just left now. My I'm God. Gonna... My God. In the name of Jesus Christ, it never returns to you Amen. by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, please. Go ahead. I think I think the Lord. Last two years, I have accidents on the leg. My, my little, you have Come accident, again. accident, accident. Yes. Oh my God. And the bone got broken. So the that bone. That, which of them? Yes. Last week, the uh, bone got broken. Got broken. Verified in the hospital. Yes, sir. And what happened now? But now, since that time, I'm feeling in that pain. Yes. They told me they have to remove the leg. The leg is, is like they um, like they say, oh, they say they have to cut the leg. Yes. From, but thank God, they called one rabbi to do something on the leg. But that I was feeling in that pain inside the bone. But now as you pray for me, I love it. My friend, no pain again. walk. Walk. Accident. Broken bone. May everything that has gone out of joint, out of alignment in your life, by reason of this miracle, I speak to you. In the name of Jesus, may bone come to his bone. May business come to his business. May relationship come to his relationship. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, God bless you in the name of Jesus. Healing, perfection for you. Yes, please. Praise God. My name is Chris Akinyoshi. So, when you were speaking about um, pie and tummy, so I receive pain and that pain moves out of me. When you speak. Yes. Thank you, it's Jesus. gone completely. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you. I want to hear the testimony. Is, is that a young lady? Let me hear her testimony. But not, not, well, yes, do, and then the, the little one. Yes. My name is Miracle. Since last week, I've been having sore Can you imagine? Truth. What a name. Since last week, I've been having sore truth. I almost lost my voice, and I didn't come for the kingdom. You had? Sore truth. Okay, okay, okay. I almost lost my voice, and I didn't come for the kingdom conference because of that. And what happened now? It's gone already. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, it never returns to you. Uh-huh. My name is Apan Favor. I want to thank God because I've been healed from abdominal pain. Since when I was little till now, I've been feeling the pains. But today, I've been healed completely. Oh my God, check yourself. Yes. No pain. It never returns to you again. In the name of Jesus. You will never forget this conference. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, this is why it is important to invite people to church. It is more than just trying to promote a man's assignment. You are giving people an opportunity to experience Jesus. I was glad, he said, when they said unto me. These are procedures that sometimes would cost thousands of naira, dollars, and yet in a moment, twinkling of an eye by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's take two more and then we'll have to wrap up for the sake of our time. Yes, please, go ahead. Um, my name is Deborah. I, um, I was diagnosed of fibroid two years ago uh -huh. and then um, usually I still have pain on my pelvic area and it, it causes um, pain monthly, my point monthly, but as um, the prayer was going on, I just sat down after the prayer because I felt um, well, God has done the miracle. I started um, trying to um, contrast my stomach, yes. stomach, stomach, and then press it. I can't feel that stiffness anymore. I can't feel. I can't feel it anymore. The power of God is a wonder to behold. A wonder to behold. In the name of Jesus Christ, this healing remains permanent. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. One more person from you and then we'll pray generally. My name is Jerome Eugene. I'm a footballer. When I was young, around 14 years old, I had an injury. But I didn't treat it very well. So it came out to be something very serious. So I went to the hospital. The doctor said I can't play football again. Because the leg used to swell up on its own. Okay. So on Which of them? Swelling. Left or right? Right foot. Okay. Uh -huh. so, 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 so at the time I was praying and God showed me like an encounter that the leg is okay. But out of faith I didn't believe. I still went to another hospital again. What happened now? The doctor now? said the same thing. Now I just felt that the pain is no more there. Check and yourself. And You're a footballer. Leg, and, and it's swollen up. I just Go ahead. Myself. Check yourself. Do what you would do in the field. Any pain? Look at that. 
Hallelujah. Are you a serious footballer? You plan to go very far. Can I pray for you? It takes more than a ball and a skill. Stand up. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that when God lifts you, you will behave yourself wisely. You see, we are tired of praying for people that God will lift and then eventually they will act as if it's not God that lifted them. But we pray for you. We must be able to trust God for believers to be strategically positioned across every sphere of influence. Politics, governance, sports. There must be people there who defend the interest of the Christ. And we pray for you, my friend. More than a ball, more than the money, more than the fame, more than the glamour, may you truly be an ambassador. And every grace and every provision, every favor that must be made for your lifting, may God, here on this ground, I pray that many years from now you will return back as a professional footballer and you will come and testify in the name of Jesus. You take that grace and do exploits for Jesus. Yes, please. Two more and then we're done. Are you getting blessed praise in this service? Lord. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God because God healed me in three ways. Um, because I was diagnosed with glaucoma. So this morning I couldn't really see well, but during the ministration, I could see clearly. Hallelujah. Then um, I had um, multiple lumps on my breast. Multiple? Before, yes, sir. Verified? Verified. So they're gone now. I can't Completely? Yes. My God. Then I also had a tumor in my tummy, but I felt it melting. And now you see how demonic Satan can be. Glaucoma, multiple lumps, tumor. That's the assignment of Satan. You know he has passed a life when you see these evidences. But the Bible says for this purpose was the Son of Man, God made manifest that he may destroy. My sister, look at me. This is the house of God. This is what happens when we come to the house of God. Lay your hands there. We pray for you as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, universal. I stand here and in the name of Jesus we declare and we decree perfection, wholeness from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. It never returns. You will return back with joy and you will tell people you found Jesus, you found his power in church. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you in Jesus name. Let's take the last one and then I'll pray generally for them. Yes, please. My name, my name is Abengwe Uche. I'm a fashion designer. I had during my university days, I had an accident that brought about a shift in my hip joint. A shift? A shift in my hip joint. Okay. So it's always difficult for me to make clothes if I'm, in the, if I'm making my designs. I, if I sit, standing up is difficult. Yes. If I stand for long, I feel like I feel pain. So what happened like, now? Now I can stand. I don't believe I can stand up to this time. Sit down and stand up. Please just let, let him just sit there. Okay, stand up. Goodness, sit down again. Stand up. Calvary Bible Church, give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, not only will God make whole your hip bone, in the name of Jesus, that which you do, may you dress kings. In the name of Jesus, may you dress nobles. The level of competence and intelligence and relationships, connections, strategic alliances, that needs to happen to your business here on this ground will shift you to a new season in your life now for the sake of time all of you i know that there are many more who have received but i stand in agreement with the man of god over this assembly and in the name of hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you